What I've done is I want to keep you up on a new thing that I got and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll help inform you a little bit. But what I've got is the Celestron motor focuser for the SCT telescopes. And as you guys know, I had originally uh, installed a motor, a focuser on my original 130 SLT, and uh, uh, I love it. And I'm and I'm I'm glad that I found one because I shake so much I can probably show up on a Richter scale somewhere in the United States when I'm trying to do anything. I noticed a lot of people made comments on my old video that uh, they, they loved the idea and a few of them have actually got it and said it worked great. We had one guy that had a little difficulty uh, uh, getting it working. I'm not sure, if, I don't remember if he ac actually ever got it working or not correctly, but uh, one out of quite a few that have, been, that have gotten that same focuser. Well, unlike that focuser, this focuser is actually controlled through the mount's hand controller to focus. Uh, it can also be used on a computer to autofocus during your shooting. Uh, of course, it's not compatible with the AFI Air uh, software, so uh, you've got to use a computer. I'm going to go through the parts that it came with and uh, how to install it on my SCT, the Smith Cassegrain. Now this is the newer model, so it's designed to fit the uh, nine and a quarter edge HDs. Uh, the old style didn't fit the edge H the nine and a quarter units because of the way that it was too close to the center hub. And uh, uh, so they've redesigned it so it'll work on the SCTs. So anyway, let's go through the parts that it comes with and how to install it on the SCT telescopes. All right. First, we've got the uh, uh, bungee style, bungee cord style telephone cable to go between the motor focus motor and uh, the mount. And you can actually use the mount to focus with it. And you have a Phillips screwdriver that came with it. and an Allen wrench, a regular wrench that you need for install, and you have a spacer of some kind. I don't know if it's a clamping spacer or just a spacer for the motor. You have one small flathead screw and one small Allen wrench locking screw. It comes with two plates. You got one plate, this plate is for the 6 and 7 inch and the 8 and 9.25 uh, SCT scopes. And depending on what size scope you've got is what size, what direction you use to mount it in. And then you have the, another one for uh, 11 and 14 inch scopes. And of course you have the uh, Celestron motor itself. And if you notice, this one has got a curve, in, curve cut into it. And that is the new design for the uh, 9.25 edge HD telescopes. Uh, the older style, both sides look the same as it goes around the top and it won't fit on the, on the nine and a quarter SCTs from my understanding, but it'll fit. But, and this allows it to fit on the SCT nine and a quarter. All right, and there we have all the parts. So let's get to installing. All right, let's start this operation. All right, so I gotta pull this off, and they say it should pull up and pull off, but I ain't getting any luck. So they say use a flathead screwdriver and pull the rubber off of it. Oh, there we go, and the rubber's off. But yeah, it's just it's it's a whole rubber piece around this collar. All right. 
Now let's loosen and remove the three screws with the Phillips screwdriver that they provided. And then the, no, they're just that loose. So they weren't on tight at all. I was expecting them to be pretty tight, but they weren't. You need to keep these screws because you're going to use them again. All right. That plate just lifts right out of there just like that. There's the three screws. So there's the two back plates. So this is the one I want for my nine and a, nine and a quarter. All right, as you can see, this plate in here has got six holes in it. Three larger holes and three smaller holes. I guess the size difference is for the larger telescopes, they may use the same plate for the, for the different sizes. And they, the other ones may have the larger screws in them. So what I'm going to do is the backing plate that I've got for the focuser that tightens the focuser down has got the recess in it. And it's matching the uh, uh, diameter of the, the center column. And also there's steps here. And I'll make sure the steps are matching to where they go down inside. All right. Now I will put all three screws in here. And the holes that I need. And I will use the other three hole the other three holes to line up the holes with so I can find the right spacing and I'll start the screws. I'm just going to start them. Make sure you don't cross thread them or anything. Come on. The last one doesn't want to start. There we go. Alright. And I will just pull it down. I won't tighten anything. I'll just pull them down across even and then I'll tighten them. That way I keep the plate level and it's not binding it anywhere, right? Now these weren't, the original plate wasn't in tight so you don't have to put these in too tight either. Alright? And then what you'll do is you'll actually turn the, the, the center shaft to make sure it turns all right in both directions so it's not bound binding up or anything okay all right now we'll go on to the next step using the nine and a quarter uh, telescope they provide an adapter a sizing adapter for the shaft for the 9.25 and as you can see there's a small ear there's a small ear that uh, you have to line up when you put it in place and it just drops in. And then you rotate it around until you get to the where it's supposed to be. The flathead screw that they provided and drop it right into the right there. You tighten that down to hold it in place. Find the little Allen wrench locking screw that came with it and that's going to go right here right into this hole and as you see there's some there's some blue um, on it and that's to keep it from backing out when you put it in and that just screws right into place right into there When you get to the blue, it gets a little hit, a little harder to turn. It doesn't mean it's cross-threaded. It just means it's that stuff is going to keep it from backing that backing out. So you get it. I, at least, I would at least put it even to where it's even with the top of it here, far enough down. And then what you have to do is see how there's an arrow right here 
And then there's a bracket drawn on here in white with an end point on each end, and you got to make sure that th that arrow is lined up with that bracket. And if it's not, then you use the supplied wrench, Allen, the supplied wrench, and rotate it around to where it's at least in there somewhere. Line up the recess here with the recess here, and put it down over the shaft. And that should kind of get you somewhere in the middle. And then you'll do your best to locate the threads here. And tighten it down. Not tighten it down, but snug it up. All, almost all the way down. And then again, you want to make sure you pull it down even between the two sides so it's not jammed up in any way. And then tighten down a little more. All right. And that's how that goes on. And the last final step you'll need to do to finish mounting this on the telescope, there's two Allen wrench head screws on the base of this that actually tighten it against the uh, uh, shaft of the focuser. This one actually close, opens and closes the clip uh, around, around the uh, 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 shaft. And this was a locking screw that actually tightens the whole thing down against the shaft to actually allow it to focus correctly. Uh, without, this one, with, without this one being tight, you can get this one tight, real tight without stripping it, but it still won't, it'll still won't grab the shaft and rotate it. This is the one that actually got to be the tightest one to allow it to actually grip the shaft and move it to focus it. And it's just two Allen wrenches, like I say, this one here, like this, make sure it's tight. Tighten, don't tighten it up too much. Now this is a shallow hole, so there's not much in there as far as what the Allen wrench can grab. Where this one, the Allen wrench goes in this one quite a bit further, so it's, it's less likely to strip, but you can still strip it. But you just tighten that up as much as you can, and it should actually tighten on the shaft. So if you try it and it doesn't tighten on the shaft, then get your Allen wrench and just tighten it back up until you can get it to tight enough to where it actually is locked down on the shaft and turn it. Now, you can't get to these screws from this side, say like they're some reason or another they're around. And all you have to do is take the little tool, the, the little tool that they got with the kit, and put it on it, and rotate it around. This allows you to rotate it around so you can get to those two screws. All right. And once you get those tight, you're good to go. And that's the last step to uh, putting it on.